We are getting all fired up because we've got Michael Abramson joining us in the studio straight after the news. In fact, he's in with us right now. Michael, we've got a minute or two before we get to the news. So give us a little, uh, what, what can we expect after 10 o'clock? Well, Michelle, firstly, thanks so much for having me on the show. I haven't decided yet exactly what I'm going to do because it depends on the energy from the listeners. But I think if in the meantime, if they could all collect a banknote, a cell phone, and let's say some other... A pen. Mobiles, yes, all right, a pen, a banknote, and a cell phone, and one other mysterious item. So I want them each to have four items. Three of them will be the same. Any banknote, any pen, and any cell phone, and one other item. Keep that together. We'll play a game on air. Okay, so you got that, your banknote, your cell phone, your pen, and a mysterious item. You're going to bring it in front of you, get ready, get waiting. After the news, Michael's going to play something rather exciting. We don't know what. <laughs> but, you know, you are rather good at making us all get excited and do something really? different. <laughs> you said you're going to wait and see what the energy of the listeners. How are you going to feel the energy? We'll send from the phones and from the, from the callers that we get, and we'll just see how enthusiastic they are, and that will determine what I do. Okay, guys, please, get enthusiastic. <laughs> what happens if people just want to listen in and don't want to phone? What no, Michelle, they're your listeners. They'll phone. Oh, <laughs> the pressure's on. The pressure's on. And I'll tell you where the pressure's on as well is uh, you be the DJ. Is it going to be Lyra or is it going to be some Piwe that you're going to hear? You're starting to SMS in 34701. And I know that's a huge, big debate because they're both such gorgeous performers. So it's going to be really, really hard. But uh, you're welcome to make that choice. Come on. You can do it. It's SMS us 347. 701. Call us 0891-104-207. Tell us which song you'd like to hear and get that pen, that, what did we say? A pen, pen a banknote, bank note, and a, a cell, cell phone, phone, and one mysterious item. And one mysterious item. You don't have to tell us what that mysterious item is, but have it ready in front of you, and Michael's going to completely change your world. As you heard from that just about beep, just about beep. It's, so, it's three minutes past ten. You are with SFM 104 to 107, South Africa's news and information leader. This is the Lifestyle Show, and we're going to crack right in. We spoke about Michael Abramson earlier uh, on the show. He came on our show a while back, and he did this trick with you guys where he – I don't know. It's not a trick. I don't want to say a trick, hey, Michael? It's an experiment, let's it's say, an experiment or a routine. Where, where he like called, told you to choose three things, and then you swapped it around. We're going to do that again. We've got a huge response to it, and we're going to do that again. So while you're listening to the interview, prepare yourself. Get your cell phone ready, a pen your a bank note, your cell phone, a pen, a bank note, and then one secret object. And uh, from there, we're going to continue with the game, so to speak. But before we even get into the game, Michael, mm -hmm. um, and I, I just have to tell our listeners this as well. Michael gave me a card now, and on the back of the card, I wrote a country and I wrote food. I thought it was quite a difficult food, but anyway, we'll okay, see. We'll see. I'm we'll watching see. your body language all the time <laughs> to see what you give away. It's on the table, face down in front of me. I've had no access He's, to it. I've seen that. You've had absolutely no access. We're going to see if you are able to do it. Right. But um, before we even get to that, let's talk about the show that you've been doing, um, Revealing the Secrets of the Mind. It's called Visage. Yes. What is the show? It, it, it's, you, you went from doing one show to now doing like a whole bunch of shows. People mm. just seem to love it. They do love it. And visage means the face. So it's, mm. it's all about facial expression. And the whole theme of the show is about the face and how you read eye movement and body language. And all that sort of thing is, is kept as an ongoing theme throughout the show. It's the first time I've ever had a director, a well-known Richard Nosworthy, who is well-known in the industry, and yeah. he is directing the show. And it's been rather challenging and interesting to work with a director for the first time, because in the past, I've had all the editorial decisions, and I've decided what I want to do and put the show together on my own initiative. Now I've got somebody else telling me, you will do this and you will do that. And it's a very different dynamic, mm -hmm. but I think it works very well. We work well together, and he comes up with some amazing ideas, and we make it work. In a way, what he's doing is he's taking um, the skill that you have yeah. and he's turning it into something far more theatrical. Correct. It's exactly what he's doing. But he's also got a lot of input in terms of the scripts, in mm. terms of the, the look, the set, the costumes, all of that, which is a, a bit of a, a difference from what I've done in the past. So what does that make you now? Does that make you a magici magician or no, are you still a, I'm definitely not a, a, magician. a mentalist if you want to describe it as such? I'm completely a mentalist and I work purely with the mind. And with the power of the mind and how to influence people using psychology, body language, eye movement, maths, memory, all these techniques that involve the mind. So not, I'm not a magician at all. There's no magic tricks in the show. Yeah. That's not what it's about. Okay. 
So I'm, I'm almost I'm actually getting the slightly sweaty <laughs> palms for you because I'm like, so we, we we've put this card in your in your wallet and you've asked yes. me to think about a country. Okay, it's in the wallet. I have no access to it. Yes, I've asked you. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and from the way you respond. <laughs> uh, and because I know you, it gives me a, a little bit of an idea. Yes. But you've written down a country, and it's a country that you wrote at random. Yes. I haven't. I didn't ask you to write a specific country in a specific region. You've written down a country, and you've written down a food item. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's try. With well, a country, I'm going to ask you what continent it's in, but you're not going to tell me. I'll I'll name the six continents, and mm. you just think the answer yes or no, but don't nod or shake your head mm. or any of that. Okay. Is it in North America? Don't say yes or no. Oh, very good. Nice poker face. That's good. <laughs> uh, South America. Okay, I don't think so. Europe. Okay, that's possible. Asia. No. Uh, Australasia. Africa. An island country somewhere. All right, I'll tell you what. Think of, I think I, I've, I've narrowed it down to possibly two continents. Think of the first letter of your country. Just visualize yourself drawing this letter in your mind. Okay, think of the second letter. Mm, is, uh, just yes or no, is the second letter an M? No. But it's similar to an M. The second letter. The second letter of your country. Is it similar? Just, just yes or no? No. Not an M? No. Okay, not similar to an M, like an N. No. All right, don't worry. We'll let's. I'll tell you what we'll do. Just think of think of the name of the country or something significant about the country, if you could. I think I know the first letter, and I'm narrowing down. I've got two possibilities, but I, do you know what the flag of this country looks like? Yes. And I ask you that. Think of the colours in the flag. That's colours are more expressive. Um, it's two colours. Is it two colours? No. Not two colours in the flag. All right. Let's go to the food item then. I don't know what your country is then. Wow, are you having problems I'm getting, with I'm having me? problems with that. It's, okay, let's go. <laughs> is it it's, because you're on radio, do you think? Possibly. I don't know. It's just that I'm thinking, that, is there an S in your country? Yes. At, at the beginning, is the first letter an S? No. Not an S. All right, let's go back to, does it end in an S? Yes. Okay, that's better. Is it three? Three colors in the flag of the yes. country. Okay, now, I'm, now it's starting to sort of make sense. I was thinking for some reason Switzerland. Switzerland came to me, but I don't think it's that. It ends in an S. But for some, is, has the country got two names? Yes. Okay, I thought so. You see, I'm, I'm alternating between the two. Then it would be Holland yes. or the Netherlands. Or yes, there we go. Would, would that? Yes, you got there, huh? Is that, is that your country? <laughs> All right. I was, I, was picking up, I was picking up red and then, but were you thinking of what, red, white and blue are yes. the colors in the flag? Yeah. Okay, I was getting Switzerland for some reason. And you reason. kept saying M close to N, but except you said the set, second letter. But the, the, yeah, but then the country started with an N, which yes. is very similar. So yeah. it could have been that. Okay. Should we, should we try the food item? I, okay. There's no ways you're going to get this. Visualize yourself eating this item, right? Is it something that you enjoy? Can I ask you that? Yes. All right. You really you enjoy it. Visualize yourself eating this item right now. Yeah. Is it messy? Yes. Okay. I can sense it's it's fairly messy, and but yeah. it's something that you'd really enjoy tucking into. I'm sensing it's quite sweet. Yes. It's certainly not a it's not an hors d'oeuvre or a a salad item no. or that sort of thing. I'm sensing it's... Does it have a specific color? Yes. Can you visualize that color? Mm. Is it fairly dark? Yes. All right. It's, okay, that's better. Now we, now we are on the roll. <laughs> it's, 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 it's fairly, does it, is it liquid of some sort? Is it, it, does, it, does it flow? Or it flows a little bit. flows a little bit. All right, because it's, it's solid. Could it be solid? Yes. It could be solid. Yeah. And it's got a distinct color. Yes. Okay, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm right, and I'm scared to commit yet without asking you a few questions. I want to say it's some sort of chocolate, chocolate of, of some form or other, or am I, am I close? But it's chocolate that flows, maybe a chocolate fountain or something that you perhaps dip into chocolate. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> am I close? You're super close. What is it? <laughs> it's a chocolate fondant. Okay, so <laughs> there we go. Jeez, you so, know. Okay, so now you need to tell our listeners what you were looking for as you were talking to All me. sorts of things. As I, as I mentioned something, I watched to see how you respond. And I know your tells a little bit because obviously we have worked together and I have yes. been on your show before. Yeah. And I feel very much at home. I presented in the studio for years so, and years. So, like, so maybe you're feeling too relaxed in maybe, the studio. Maybe, perhaps. But, but it is difficult. I mean, it's not a, it's not a foolproof technique. Mm. As you can see, with a country, it's difficult to get it perfectly. I have to ask you questions and look for little tells. So what are you looking for? Like a flick of little, the eye? Flick of the eyes, little twitch twitches, eye movement, a hand maybe in front of your mouth or some sort of little gesture which would tell me mm. yes or no. 
Okay. So, and that's that's basically what the show is all about. The show is about different skills that a mentalist would use. Mm. And Richard's threaded it into a whole theme that runs throughout the show with a mind-boggling ending, which we haven't even rehearsed yet. It's so exciting. I don't even know what it's going to look like. But everything that happens in the show is predicted and yeah. revealed at the end. So, Michael, we mentioned the word mentalist. And I yes. think that for a lot of people, you know, they'll watch the TV show and they'll go, oh, a mentalist is someone. What, what is a mentalist? A mentalist actually? is somebody, the best definition definition I've found is somebody who uses the five senses to create an illusion of a sixth sense. Although, oh, it's, not, although it's not really an illusion because I think I have a highly developed sixth sense anyway, just from what I do in my day-to-day -day life because mm. I do courses at schools with learners and varsity students and I teach them how to use the mind productively, how to memorize an entire shuffled pack of cards, for mm. example, or how to memorize big blocks of work for yes. their studies because I studied actuarial science and that is probably the hardest degree you can do and you have 27 textbooks yeah. 400 pages each and you have to memorize all this work and it's all about tax laws in Great Britain so it's not the most <laughs> stimulating and exciting thing and I had to develop techniques for myself on how yeah. to condense that information that I could revise it and yes. I actually summarized my entire syllabus into nine hours of work and which is 27 pages of, uh, 27 textbooks of 400 pages each into nine hours so you need a competitive advantage when you study that because yeah. you, there's no pass mark. You marked according to how everybody else does. So you need to be better than the next person. And because of that, you need a competitive advantage. So I've developed techniques that gave me a competitive advantage that yeah. I'm now sharing with learners at schools around yeah. Johannesburg. And it's really exciting to interact with these young people. And the show is an entertaining culmination, if you like, mm. of all these techniques that I use. We're chatting to mentalist Michael Abramson and you're welcome to give us a call on 0891104207, or SMS us on 34701. We'd love to hear from you. Michael, um, you mentioned that you've been working with students quite a bit. Yes. What are you, what are you reading from South African young people at the moment? Quite a lot. I go to a number of different schools. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that spelling has deteriorated enormously, but I think that's, that's as a result of people using cell phones, predictive mm. text and spell checkers on the computer that you don't need to learn how to spell words anymore. So I've noticed spelling has deteriorated in a way that is very, very scary. Yeah. Because if you can spell well, it means that the person marking your exam will give you psychologically will yeah. subliminally will mark your paper up because you just make a better impression. And yeah. I found, so I do a lot of spelling techniques on my courses because I found that spelling is really badly done. But otherwise, yeah. they're young people who's, who have incredible minds and incredible talent, but a lot of the time they don't realize the talent that they have. And it's a matter of honing that talent and getting them to produce the best that they can that they can do and on a consistent basis and building up the confidence. Mm. And I find that I'm having great results in doing that so and meeting you, some incredible young people. You talk about confidence. I mean, it does mm. seem to me that confidence is not necessarily something they teach you at school. No. I mean, and my apologies to all teachers who are working in that field, but it does feel like confidence is something that, that we have to struggle with outside of the school. Sure. And, and, and how would you teach that? Basically, by just showing everybody that they have a lot of mental abilities that they don't realize they have. Mm. Everybody walks around and says, I have a terrible memory. There's no such thing as a terrible memory. It's either trained or untrained. Mm. And if you train it correctly, you can remember things. And I show people how much they actually can remember using little games that we play. And I call out a list of words and they call it back to me. And they see that they have these abilities and they start believing it. And once you start believing it, the road to success is paved with gold, as they say. <laughs> it's like that kid's game where you turn the one card yes, and you have yes, to remember where the other one Exactly. So all these techniques we use. On the line, we've got, what is, is it, is it, it's, it's Hamid. Hamid, hello. Uh, how are you? Sir? Very, very well. How are you, Hamid? Okay, Michael, how are you? Hi, Hamid. I'm very well, thank you. How I are you? Yeah. I miss you at a cricket tournament. <laughs> Why don't you come back? It's that decision, unfortunately, Hamid, is out of my hands. And I'm working so much on these on these mentalism shows oh. and working with young people. So that's become my career now. But it's not a closed book yet. There's a possibility I could come back at some point. But I do oh, miss the interaction with the listeners, I must be honest. And I miss working with some of the members of the team. It's just that the powers that be have decided that... I'm not the right person that they want at the moment, but hopefully that'll change at some point. But thanks very much uh -huh. for your for your kind words. Okay. Another thing is, uh, do you help like uh, students or uh, you know, if I've got uh, a son which is uh, needs but of remember, you know, uh, what his maths and what his uh, yes. Uh, do you do that privately Absolutely. or with a phone or um, do you got a where formula? is he? Where, where are you based, Hamid? Which area? 
the major. Okay, that's perfect. I do courses all around Johannesburg at different schools, at, for universities, at uh, for outside people who want to join a course. In fact, I have one next week uh, on the 2nd and 3rd, next weekend, next Saturday morning and Sunday afternoon. Uh, uh, Michelle yeah. will give out my email address and you're welcome to contact me via email. Um, it is info at powerbrain. Yeah. Dot co dot za. Oh. So info at powerbrain, one word, mm -hmm. uh, dot co dot za. Pop me an email and I'll send you all the information and I've still got space on the course and he's welcome to join if he wants to. Super. Thanks a lot, Mike. Good. Thanks Hope for your kind words. From you over there. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hamid. Thanks for giving us a call, Hamid. So there we go. Michael is teaching uh, uh, kids as well. So if you would like, uh, if you have a student who you think could get, get really learn from this, then you're welcome to. The number to dial 0891104207, 0891104207. Someone wants to know, do you have clips on YouTube? I do have a couple. We're filming, actually, we're filming this whole show, The Visage Revealing the Secrets of the Mind. So that'll be filmed for television and it will go out later in the year. The whole stage show is being filmed. We're also filming a, a television series later in the year. Uh, on, on YouTube at the moment, if they search my name, there are a couple of clips of me doing small things, but I don't want to give away all the weird and wonderful and fantastic things that are happening in the show because I want the audiences who see the show to see it at first hand. So we've kept the YouTube clips down to a minimum, basically, mm -hmm. and just to give people a taste, whet the appetite, but not reveal too much. Okay, then there's another question. Did you watch the Lance Armstrong interview? Yes. And were you able to read him in terms of his answers? Absolutely, answer? definitely. And I get asked that. In fact, I did a talk for the first year students at Wits University yesterday, and I got asked that question, and I, do, I have had it repeatedly. Uh, you could sense from Lance Armstrong from his body language, he was very, very uncomfortable, uh, very hesitant. I think he'd planned in his mind what he was going to reveal in advance. And I don't think Oprah grilled him enough. And in terms of some of the questions, maybe he predicted and he gave one word answers and one word answers are a sure sign that he uh, of sort of trying to evade the question. But you could see he was very uncomfortable. He was squirming in his seat. His hands were clenched and he was sweating quite a lot. So he was it was a very uncomfortable experience for him. Was he telling the truth in that interview? I think I would say, I'd put it this way, I'd say he was telling the truth, but what he told maybe didn't go far enough, if that makes sense. He told, I'd say predominantly the truth. There were moments where maybe he glossed over things and left out important facts, but he did reveal and sort of try and suggest an apology, but deep down, I don't know that he, he succeeded in doing that. And I think maybe in a way he made more enemies than friends mm. in terms of what he revealed. I don't think he revealed nearly enough. I, Kind of maybe a level of arrogance that, that yeah. I mean, even as he apologized, it was, as yes, you said, exactly. perhaps. I think deep down in his mind, he, he thought initially that he would never get caught. And if he hadn't come back to cycling, he would never have been caught. And he would have got away with it and everybody would have thought this, this incredible person. But it shows you, eventually you will be found out. Okay, I've got a great question from Francis for you. And I'm going to oh. ask you, Bob, why can't I remember people's names? <laughs> Well, Mary, I have no idea. Uh, this, the, the technique for remembering people's names is, firstly, there are a couple of things that you can do. You need to believe that you can do it for a start. If you tell yourself you can't, the brain is incredibly lazy. But being lazy, the brain is also very powerful. So if you say to yourself, I can't remember this number, I'm going to write it down on a piece of paper. The brain says, okay, it's acceptable to... I don't have to remember it because I'll write it down. If you force yourself and say, I'm not going to write it down, I'm going to remember this number, and you force your brain to work, your brain will work for you. And it's just a matter of believing that you can do that. And I promise mm. you, you can. So what happens is when somebody tells you their name, listen for the name and then use that name in a sentence straight after that. So if Bob comes up to you and says, hi, I'm Bob, you say, so Bob, <laughs> what did you think about about the sports game yesterday or Bob what's it like jumping up and down in water or, or anything like that so, so, so you basically use the name and maybe make a little joke and create the awareness about the name and that will help it to stick in your mind and then you you need to keep using it otherwise you will forget about it I love that okay so we're chatting to Michael Abramson who is a, a mentalist Michael <laughs> well done and uh, if you do want to ask him any questions the number to dial is 0891 104207 and our SMS number is 34701. Now, Michael, mm. you've got a trick for us and it uh, is for everybody who's listening. Okay, we're we going to do that now. We're going to do it. All right. So, so we asked people to, I don't, I've got a terrible memory. I can't remember what items we asked them to, to be. No, it's a banknote, a cell phone and a pen. <laughs> and I asked them also to have a mysterious item with them. So what I'd like you all to do, 
Leave the mysterious item to one side, and in front of you, if you have a table, lay out the three items that everybody has. So banknotes, a pen, and a cell phone in any order you like. So there's six different permutations for how you could lay them out. Put one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. And do that now, please. So pen, cell phone, and banknote in any order you like in front of you on the table. Then pick up your mysterious item and put it right on the left end of the row, so next to the item on the left. So you've now got your mysterious item and then your three other items in a random order. Okay, now, that you did that and you laid that out according to your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind decided that this is the way you're going to lay the items out. So now we need to randomize the process. So what I'm going to ask you to do, we'll start with a pen. Take the pen and swap the pen with the item immediately on its left. So just exchange the pen and the item immediately on its left and do that now. And you will be able to do it. Perfect. Now I want you to take the banknote and swap the banknote with the item immediately on its right. If the banknote's already on the right, do nothing. But swap the banknote with the item on its right. All right, we've moved the pen and we've moved the banknote. Now we need to move the cell phone. So take the cell phone and swap the cell phone with the item immediately on its left. If it's already on the left, do nothing. You've now all exchanged all these items completely. I want you now to work with a mysterious item, which could be anywhere now because objects have moved. If the mysterious item is on one of the ends of the row, either left end or right end, swap it with the item next to it. If it's in one of the two middle positions, do nothing. All right, I hope you're all with me at this point. And now you now have four items in front of you in a completely random order that even you don't know what order it would have ended up with because you did all that swapping. I want you to look at the first two. If we call the items positions one, two, three, and four, look at position one and position two and pick up either of those items and remove it. So whichever one is either in position one or position two, remove it. You now have three items in a line. Take the last two, positions th what was originally positions three and four, but now your middle item and your last item on the right and swap those two. You've done that. You now have three items in a line. Remove the one that is now on the extreme left. Remove the one that is now on the extreme right. And you're left with one item. And if you've done this correctly, even though you started completely randomly, I'm wishing you a very wealthy and an incredible future because you should be left with a banknote. And if that is the case, may it create lots of money and lots of opportunities for you all in future. And let us know if I'm right. Okay, we do want to know, what did you have in the middle? Was it the banknote that you were left with? Are you going to be wealthy in 2013? Please give us a call right now on 0891-104207. 0891-104207. We want to know, did you have that banknote in the middle? What happened? Or send us an SMS on 34701. 34701. We would love to hear from you. So... We, we we want to know some we have while we wait for the phone calls and there mm -hmm. they start coming in I just want to say that uh, Sonia has said is visage in English as my uh, f my son is not very very smart in not smart or well, not fluent in Afrikaans it's totally in English it's a French name but it's a name that actually came to me when I was on the tennis court playing tennis last year and I thought I need an, an interesting name for the show that encapsulates what we want to portray yes the show's in English the show is mind-boggling it's some of my pet effects from the past glammed up by the director who's made it into a, a theatrical experience. And we've got a couple of new things that have never been performed before anywhere in the world. Brand new effects, my own creations and Richard's creations that we're putting together in a show. It's about 90 to 95 minutes with an interval. And it is a theatrical experience not to be missed. You can get tickets, by the way, via CompuTicket from Tuesday. They will be open. Alternatively, I've kept quite a few tickets back for people who've seen my shows before and you can contact me at that email address info at powerbrain.co.za and you can get tickets directly from me otherwise from CompuTicket from Tuesday. Okay, Marilyn on the line. Marilyn, hello. Hi. 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 I ended up with a banknote. Well you done. You ended up with a banknote. Yes. I hope you had a big banknote with lots of money. Yes. <laughs> Were you surprised? Sorry? Were you surprised? Um, I was surprised uh, because, you know, I was just listening. I just tuned in very quickly and I thought, oh, I need to listen to this and I need to do it. And I actually did it. I'm a small business owner and I need to make lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you're well on your way. You're well on your way. On the line, we've got uh, Corrine. Corrine, hello. Okay. Hello. 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 Is that Corrine? 
It's Lorraine. Oh, Lorraine. Sorry, my, my eyesight yes. is terrible. Hello, Lorraine in Durban. Hello. Hi. Yes, I ended up with a bank note and I'm absolutely flabbergasted <laughs> because so many people will have done so, I'm sure, and I just cannot understand how that would have worked because we would have all had our own arrangements to Correct. begin with. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you what, Lorraine, if you're in Durban, we're bringing the show around the country late in the year, and mm. we will be in Durban and Cape Town and all the big centers. So mm. when I'm in your town, okay. come along and watch, and you'll understand a lot better about that. how everything works. Thank but you I'm, so much. I Thank wish you well every done, success too. in future. And then on the line, we've got Mrs. Matthews. Mrs. Matthews, hello. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Yes, I ended up with the bank note, so I'm looking forward to lots more wealth this year. <laughs> <laughs> Were you surprised? Absolutely surprised. Yes, yes. And I just love this kind of stuff. And it really is, um, yeah, a real surprise. And well done. Thank you. Where where are you in the country? I'm uh, in, uh, outside Cape Town. Outside Cape Town. Yes. Are you going to be going to Cape yes, Town? Yes, we're going all over the place later are in you? the year. Yes, oh, absolutely. Gosh. So look forward to it and uh, let us know what you think. Yes, indeed. Okay, Thank fantastic. you for the experience. It's an Thank you. Experience. Bye-bye. Right, phone ringing off the hook, but uh, let's go through to some of the SMSs as well because we seem to have a whole bunch of those. So, enjoying the show. Hi, Michael. In my 46th year at UNISA, struggling with studies, how do I remember four modules for June and be stress-free? Okay, we're going to uh, go to that answer in a moment, but I just want to say, hello, I used to have a great memory, but since my pregnancy, I have porridge brain. Is there a cure? That's an interesting one. We've had, yes, got the banknote. Was the banknote. Michael, you were right. Great. Incredible, says someone. Yes, spooky. <laughs> yes, the banknote is the only one remaining. I'm going to be rich. Woohoo. Yes, the banknote was left uh, in the middle. Wow. Dave in Cape Town says, yes, I had the banknote. Hi, huh, yes, it was the banknote. Sitting in the car, shuffling things on my lap, <laughs> and it still worked. That's from Fazika. FB says, can you teach someone how to forget something? Now, there's an interesting ah. question. Uh, yes, the banknote's in the middle. Robin says, yes, the banknote. Well done. Yes, thank you. Absolutely correct. Looking forward to the wealth. Wow, it's a banknote. Well done. That's uh, from Thisby in, in Botrafia. Amazing. You were right from Eleanor. Hope it's going to be a good indication for 2013. Brilliant. Love your show, Michelle, says Vicky. Uh, KZN, that's uh, Mari. Banknote in the center. Awesome. Good. Well, I guess I'm heading for a wealthy year. That's <laughs> Deneo from the Free State. Vusi in Midran says, correct. I was left with a banknote. Yes, it was the banknote. And so on and so on. So we've had huge response on the SMS. And people, you are just loving it. I'm glad we've printed all these new banknotes in the recent past <laughs> because we, we're making a lot of people very wealthy. Well, that's what we want to hear. We do want people people to be um uh, uh, um, uh, 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 F- Fison and says more wealth is expected right here in Johannesburg. Hey, Mr. Michael, I have the bank note in the centre and well I was done. surprised. Met, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend it at the Met, says someone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it away. <laughs> Don't give your money the, away. It's a, so, Michael, there were hmm. a couple of questions there. Someone says All their right. brain has gone to porridge since they were it's pregnant. no such thing. That's just a belief that you can easily overturn. Um, very, very easy to get you to believe again that your brain is absolutely as strong as it can be. Uh, if you're interested, contact me via email or website. I'll send you some information. If you're in the Joburg area, you can come on one of the courses and I'll teach you how to use your brain productively. Uh, otherwise, if you want a theatrical experience and you're based in Gauteng, Pretoria or Johannesburg, come and see the show. Uh, there was a question around uh, studying. Can, a question around studying. Um, the 46-year-old, I think, gentleman who's studying in UNISA needs to learn all these modules. Absolutely, I can teach you. I have had parents and grandparents of 60 plus on the course. So, yes, absolutely. You can learn how to condense information very, very easily. Again, contact me and I'll send you that info. Can you make someone forget something sore? Your brain, your brain naturally does that, actually. Any very painful experience, your brain naturally puts it out of your mind. If you've had a real trauma, your brain automatically suppresses that so you don't recall it vividly. And that's a, almost a defense mechanism that your brain does. So I, I can't make you forget something because it is in your brain. But uh, your brain, what, what it will do is it will bypass the process enabled, enabling it to pull it out and, re- and recall it if it's too painful for you. So your brain is incredible. It does that automatically. So, so, so you wouldn't hypnotize someone on the show and then make them forget it afterwards? No, something? I don't actually do hypnosis techniques. I find that they are, they are professional hypnotists in the country who do it perfectly and who do it a lot better than I do. I don't use hypnosis in the show at all. Everything that I do in the show can be explained scientifically and 
it's just an, a very interesting experience. It'll leave you empowered, and you'll walk out of there feeling it's incredible what I can do with my mind. Okay. There's a, a couple of very interesting SMSs that have come through. Is Someone wants to know, are you doing any courses in George? Um, I don't know. I'll have to ask George first. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, it would depend on demand. I'm happy to fly around the country and, and come around – dealing maybe with the schools in the area or if there are a lot of varsity students or adults who want me to come down, you'd need to get a group together. I need a minimum of about 25 to 30 people. And then with pleasure, I can fly down and run the course for you. The course runs over two days. It's about three and a half hours uh, per session. There are two sessions and we have breaks every hour. So it's not too demanding. It's a lot of fun. And uh, all the info is on my website. If you want to go along and have a look, www.powerbrain.co.za will give you the course content and you can check it out and see. But if we can get a big enough group together, I would happily fly anywhere around the country and present the course. Okay, a couple of SMSs. Margaret from Lumbo goes, uh, wow, pretty amazing. Uh, I ended up with the, the banknote in the middle. Ephraim says, uh, really amazing. I did end up with the banknote. Money, money, money. And then someone very interestingly and correctly says, what on earth has this to do with making money? <laughs> it has a lot to do with making money. It's basically, it's a situation if, because now you've trained your brain to show your, to show your subconscious mind that you can do it. And if an opportunity presents itself to you, you'll be more aware of that opportunity and you'll grasp it with both hands rather than just dismissing it. Opportunities come around every single day and it's up to you to recognize it. And if you recognize it, you'll be successful. Uh, so, uh, Lulu from Durban says, I got the banknote. Can Michael transform it into a ticket for the Bafana match tomorrow, please? <laughs> That's Please wonderful, that but I'd rather you keep your banknote because you can you can watch the Bafana game on TV or you can go along to the stadium and support them anyway, but keep the banknote. It's going to get you lots of riches going forward. Okay, so then Jill says, I think it's because most people start off with the banknote in the center. Not at all. Why would they? For a lot of people, the cell phone is significant and a cell phone is an item that you would use in your day-to-day -day life. And you might put that in the center. You might deliberately, because you know the banknote is, is valuable to you and worth money, uh, actually it is money that you can use in your day-to-day -day life, you might deliberately put it in one of the end positions. So there's, I mean, there's there a so, way for explaining what happened there? Because people are wondering. I'd, I'll leave it as a mystery. It's basically I'm guiding you in a process, but it is fairly random along the way, and it all depends on how you, how you start things off. But... It's a, it's a conditional process. That's all I'm going to say. And it works with a lot of psychology because obviously the psychology is and in you're the beginning. suggesting something. I'm suggesting things all the time. But also in terms of psychology, how you lay it out at the beginning is obviously significant. It's probably because do, when you start, you say take a bank note. Yes. A this. It has, a it has to do with those so techniques. You start with I will those tell you that. Techniques. Absolutely right. Okay, great. So someone says, no, that thing about uh, uh, there's been questions about uh, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And someone also asks a question about. So so, so what about Alzheimer's, they say? And someone also says that they've got a seven-year-old who seems to have a memory problem. All so right. Alzheimer's with age. I generally old. work with people, I'd say from about grade six upwards, because I find that very young, younger children battle a little bit with some of the techniques because some of them can be a little bit involved. So I generally work with about children from about age 10 upwards, but throughout from about grade six, throughout primary school, high school, university, adults, teachers, parents. Uh, and then with Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's obviously is a medical condition. You need to uh, keep working at it and try and keep your brain as active as possible, even if you have Alzheimer's. Just try memory techniques. Try and practice things. Try and do mathematical give us, puzzles. Give us a memory, give us what a memory technique that one All right, produces. A memory technique that you would do is go and write down on a piece of paper maybe five items. And then just look at the list quickly and try and say them back to yourself. Or what you can also do is you can take pieces of paper uh, in let's say six different colors and tear them in two and then play that game that the children play this memory game where you turn all the pieces over and you try and find the matches and you keep i know there's some games on the cell phone i have on my cell phone a memory game at which i play every single day just to keep the brain active where you have to match the the two items together and just training your brain to do that allows your brain to be receptive to these new ideas so basically keep practicing Okay, finally, Michael, mm -hmm. Powerbrain is your website, info yes. at powerbrain.co.za. People Correct. can catch you, uh, 
catch you on the website, info at powerbrain.co.za. Can I just mention, Michelle, that we also, in addition to the UJ run of the show Visage, which is from the 12th to the 17th of February, there are eight performances. Tickets, as I say, will be available from CompuTicket on Tuesday and also through me directly if you want. I've kept a couple of them back. But we're also doing a one-off show at the Atterbury Theatre in Pretoria for people based in the Pretoria region who want to come along and watch. And those bookings are open at the moment at CompuTicket. It's Thursday night, the 7th of February. It's the first time we'll ever be presenting this new show Visage. And it's a one-off evening the theatre seats 400 people so we do have plenty of seats available that's next well not next Thursday this coming Thursday a week the 7th of Feb at 8 o'clock in the evening otherwise the UJ dates are from the 12th to the 17th I'm, I'm going to go quickly back to one more SMS because mm. I think it's such an interesting one is that earlier someone said how do you make uh, how do you lose memories like that are hard and that are hurtful mm -hmm. and uh, the person responded back saying I don't think that you're right well they used more explicit language because they want to Obviously, they're finding it very hard to lose their memory, All right. a painful memory. But then there's an interesting one is that Mari in KwaZulu-Natal says, Michael, can I make a beautiful memory more lucid, like time spent with my late beloved mother? Absolutely. And the way that you do that is you think back to all the everything that will trigger positive experiences in your mind. So think back to all the positive experiences you've had with her, uh, times that you've spent together and Try and get pictures in your mind of all those experiences. And then what happens is your brain will enhance and will fill in all the gaps and fill in all the bits and pieces to make that experience even more lucid and more vivid for you. So definitely you can do that. Just think back to all the positive things that happen. I lost my mother five years ago and I do this regularly on a day-to-day -day basis when I feel maybe a little bit down or a bit depressed. I think back to all the pleasant memories that I had with my mother and times that I've shared and they all come flooding back and you'll be amazed at how your brain recalls all sorts of positive emotions. So I take it you're not the guy who forgets where he put his keys. Generally not, no. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Abramson, thanks very much for joining Great us. Great session, Michelle. Always <laughs> lovely to be with you. Don't always lovely to be with you. Don't always lovely to be with you. Don't always lovely to be with you. Don't always.